I'm pretty sure at least once in your life you saw a robotic dog from Boston Dynamics or MIT. Those projects are extremely interesting and the best piece of hardware, at least from my point of view, are the motors. So when company T-Motor reached out to me and asked if I want to test out their new motors, play with them and build something cool, I said instantly yes. My initial plan was to build a robotic arm. Very simple, free axis, very powerful, 3D printed robotic arm. And this project is taking way more time than I initially thought and I'm still working on it. I'm redesigning constantly everything because I'm just not fully happy with how it looks like and how it will work. So it will definitely take a little bit more time to finish this one. But in the meantime, I have to figure out how to actually use these motors in order to implement them in this robotic arm project. So I thought, why not to build a robotic chassis, a platform, a universal platform so that I can build different kind of robots, test different sensors. Before moving on, let's take a look at what's inside the box. And there's actually not a lot. We have the motor, we have free cables for the power, can communication and serial communication. And as you will see in a moment, those motors are incredible, but unfortunately, those are also incredibly expensive. I 3D printed a simple mount to mount it to my workshop table and show you how it works. And also a 3D printed arm so that each movement is clearly visible. Here is my setup. Here I have the lab bench power supply set to 24 volts and that is powering this motor. Then I have two wires, just two wires for the CAN communication. Then the Arduino is communicating with the CAN module through SPI. And then I can display and control all the parameters of the motor thanks to my Python script, the very simple Python script with Kinter library so that you have nice user interface and you can clearly control everything and also see the actual position, speed and current of the motor. On the left you can see my very simple Python script and there are five different values to control in this motor, the position, speed, KP, KD and torque. As you can see if you set the position and only the KP parameter, let's say to 16, the motor oscillates quite a lot but it is possible to somehow control the position of it. But if you want to control it really precisely you have to reduce the KP a bit and as you can see the motor is pretty springy but then if you add the KD to that well, the motor will actually be pretty precise and pretty fast when it comes to setting the proper position. And if you want to control only the speed of the motor, you just have to set the speed to some value, it's in radians per second, and KD to some value. Low KD value means that the motor is easy to stop. It is great for some kind of collaborative robots where uh, the robot has to actually collaborate with humans and with higher KD value, the motor keeps its speed pretty accurately and also is pretty hard to stop. And as you can see, the motor can rotate pretty, pretty fast at 45 radians per second. And that's it for the motors. I will probably talk a little bit more about them later in the video and also in my future videos. So make sure to subscribe to don't miss that. And now let's focus on how I actually designed and made this robotic frame. I designed everything in Fusion 360 and I machined this frame, those plates on Indymil out of 6 mm plywood. And Indymil is a great machine for something like this. Plywood is totally not a problem for it and thanks to that every single hole is really really precisely cut. Of course you can just drill it by hand and cut it with a jigsaw and it will work too if you don't have an access to a CNC machine. But if you would like to get an access to a CNC machine you can check out industry.cc. There is my open source project Indymil and there is also my store where you can buy parts for Indymil and also support my work which will be great. After making the plate I obviously painted it matte black because it looks cool and then with some 3D printed holders for the motors I attached both motors to the plate. And then there is a 3D printed wheel with 3D printed tire and with 5 screws I attached the tire to the wheel. To distribute the power to the motors and also the CAN communication, I designed a simple PCB and thanks to my $200 CNC machine that I made a video previously about, I was able to go from design to actually having this PCB in my hand in about an hour. So this is a great machine for some small simple PCBs that you need right now. It's not perfect for some super tiny SMD stuff or finished PCBs for 
you know, like finished projects, but for stuff like this, it is great. With two B-rings and some 3D printed parts, I created a third wheel for a robot. That was a pretty challenging thing to design to fit it in such a small space, but it works really well and it's incredibly sturdy, so that's cool. To power this robot, I wanted to use a gel battery. Unfortunately, it's only 12 volts and these motors need 24 volts to work properly. And you can power them with up to 48 volts. They also use quite a lot, a lot of current. So I decided to go with LiPo batteries, two 3S LiPo batteries connected in series. So that's 6S about 24 volts. It should be fine for these motors. As always, when your project is just almost ready, there are all the problems that you have to solve at once and oscilloscope was pretty helpful to see what's going on with the CAN communication and fix that. And finally the robot started to move. And here you can see my very simple Python script for the laptop that I'm using to control the robot. And you can find the script and the code for Arduino and the previous Python script on my GitHub, there is a link in the description. This motor is controlled over CAN, but there is also a serial port and with that you can modify some settings, calibrate the encoder and do stuff like this. Here on the right you can also see some documentations and some useful links are in the description. Obviously I also decided to add a second floor, a second plate to the robot to actually have more space to attach stuff and in the future if I will build even a bigger robot I can just easily attach the third floor and just you know keep going on. And here it is, it took me a lot of time and there was just so many problems to solve having that many breadboard cables right here is definitely not a great idea and upgrading that with a custom PCB is something I want to do in the future. But as for now I have a pretty decent platform to experiment with different robotics project. Here I will attach different sensors and you know just everything I can hopefully. And finally I will be able to start playing with ROS which should be pretty fun. As for now this is not even a robot, this is just an RC car that you can control with a Python script on your computer and this transmitter module with the Arduino and NRF24001, something like this. Uh, so let me show you how it works. So here is how I can control the robot through my Python script on my computer and I can also modify the speed of it. It's really hard to control at higher speed, so let's stick to just one radian per second. And as you can maybe see, I already put the GoPro right here and thanks to that I have a live view from the robot and I can just see what's going on and drive around. And if you don't have a GoPro, you can just do the very same thing with an IP camera app on your phone and open it on your computer and it will work great. But thanks to that I can also record a video and show it to you. The only problem is that video on the GoPro when you also record is very slow. The chassis that I made for this project is actually a part of something bigger that I would like to focus on in the future and that is let's say a universal robotic platform or a universal robotic chassis and it's basically a set of design rules and standardized components like the plates, adapters for some kind of sensors or Arduino that you can easily just download from the internet, print or machine on a CNC machine and you have a ready component for your robot. Everything is standardized so it works together basically like Lego bricks and it's open source so you can just download anything you want and you can create it on your own and share it with the community. That's the simple idea and you can let me know what you think about that in the comments. In the future maybe I will even put my laptop here and just used a built-in camera to do some kind of object tracking with Python because that's simple stuff that is also just pretty fun to play with.
that's it for this video i hope you enjoyed it if you have any questions leave that all in the comments if you want to tell me what you think about my open robotic chassis or open robotic platform project you can let me know in the comments don't forget to subscribe thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video